Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be making a knife, specifically a chef's knife. And I'm going to go through the whole process, starting with a blank piece of metal. I'm going to give you the specifics so you could do this on your own. So here are the tools you're going to need to make a knife. These are mostly essentials. If you have a belt sander, that'll make everything so much easier for you, but I don't have a belt sander. So instead, I use an angle grinder. Make sure you have a cutoff wheel. Dremel is definitely very helpful. You're going to need a drill. You're going to need some type of vise and then some type of workbench. You're going to need epoxy, some type of hard wood. I'll get into that later in the video, what kind of wood you should be using for the handle. I have these for pins for the handle, drill bits. You can use a file. I use a file in the video. And you're going to need a lot of different types of sandpaper, ranging from 60 grit all the way up to 800, or even if you want to go crazy, 2,000 grit sandpaper. That's super important because that's how you finish the blade. So I'm using O1 tool steel, and I'm using this because I could heat treat this and temper this myself at home. I don't have to send it out. These blades, for the most part, use stainless steel because they don't rust. To prevent it from rusting, all you have to do is take care of your knife and make sure you dry it off right away and oil it. The steel I'm using is about 15 inches long, 2 inches wide, and it's 3 16 or 4 millimeters thick. So we could turn this sheet of metal into any of these. So the first step is get a magic marker and trace the knife that you want onto your metal. So that's the knife I'm making. With that done, now we can start cutting. I just want to emphasize something real quick. Make sure you're using some type of steel that you know you could treat and also that you know has a high carbon content. You want a lot of carbon because the carbon will cause the knife to get really hard when you heat treat it. If you just try to buy metal from Home Depot or something that doesn't have a high carbon content, it's a waste of time because it's not going to work. Now's a good time to put your eye protection on, your ear protection, and uh, a mask of some sort. Okay, so we're done with the rough cut and we can really see how the knife is shaping up. I'm going to start to shape the edges a little bit to get them a little more smooth and then we'll start shaping the blade. Now I'm going to take my grinder and just grind all these edges so they're a little bit smoother. This is a lot smoother now, it looks a lot better and now we could start filing. So at this point you want to make sure your handle is pretty good, it's the way you want it. You want to make sure that the blade is nice and straight. So at this stage, once you're happy with your knife, go find the drill bit that corresponds with the width of the knife. So this knife is 3 16 of an inch thick. So I look here, and I found a drill bit, 3 16 Once you find a drill bit that's the same thickness as your metal, you're going to paint the blade portion of your knife. You want to try to use a color that stands out. This is red. And just go along the blade, or where the blade will be, and just color it in. Get a nice thick layer on there because you're going to etch it away with the drill bit and that's how you're going to find your center line. You can see all the way along the blade nice and red. Now I'm going to let that dry and I'll show you how we're going to find the middle of the blade. With the blade dry we just take our bit and right where it meets is the middle. So just make a line all the way down and you can see that line goes all the way down and it's right in the middle. So now we're going to file and sand off the metal on this side and on this side until it meets the middle here. And that'll make the blade nice and even. Okay, so now we're at the most difficult part of the whole process and that's creating this nice blade. Now I'm just using a metal file and you could probably see my metal file has a long rod attached to it. So here's the rig I set up. This is just clamped down onto the table. Now you're going to have to find something, and by something I mean one of these eye screws. You could also use a lock, that's what I ended up using, and you just clamp it down. Now the reason why it's so long is because this is going to go slide in right there. You can see it slid in right there, and that's the angle that it creates. I might want to go at a little more of an angle so I don't remove as much material. I'll experiment as I go, it's not a big deal right now. and this will make it nice and even the whole way around. So now this is going to take a long time. You want to take your time on this. You want to do this right. This is the most important part. This is why it's a knife, because it comes to two spots on the end that makes it really sharp. 
and then you can see our line there and that's what we want to file down to. Once we get to that line we flip the blade over. If you have a belt grinder or something that could grind this down quickly I would use that. This is the long process. It's gonna come out real nice but it takes a while. What I'm about to do is I can see the marks that the file's making so I know that's the highest point. So now I'm gonna take my grinder and use that against the highest point. And then go back with the file, see where the highest point, then go back in the grinder and keep doing that back and forth and that'll keep this side very consistent. And then after I finish this side, I'll show it to you guys and then flip it over. You can see I'm pretty much to the line. I have a little bit more to go, but I think what I'm gonna do is, because I wanna give myself some wiggle room, just some space so if I mess up, I'm gonna flip the blade over now and start on the other side. Just take it out of the vise and flip it over. Now that I have my starting marks, I'll start grinding all up in here, getting this down. Okay, now this looks really nice. The blade is nice and straight. It's sharp already and we haven't even really sharpened it yet. So now we're gonna be drilling the handle so I have this clamped and the handle out. Got these for a dollar. It's stainless steel and all I'm gonna do is just cut them off. You can see I already started. I already cut this one because I wanted to get an idea of the thickness and this is spot on. So I'm gonna use this drill bit. So now we're on the sanding phase of our project. This is what the uh, unsanded finish looks like. And then that's what we want. I'm even going to get this down further, but this is good enough for when we heat treat it. So let's get this side to look like that side. So here's the basic idea. We're going to start at 60 grit sandpaper, which is really coarse. And then we're going to go to 230 grit. And then we're going to go to 400 grit. And then 600 grit. And to do all this, I suggest you get a sanding block or some type of flat sanding tool to help you move back and forth smoothly. And that'll just make this so much easier and a lot smoother. Now we're moving to 400. Now we're moving up to 600. Good, we're done sanding. So do the other side, you already saw I did the other side. Now let's get a hot fire going to heat treat the knife. So here's the type of fire you want to get going. You want something tall, something relatively thick, because at the bottom you want as little oxygen as possible. Obviously if there's fire there's going to be oxygen, but you want to be starved. If you starve all the oxygen, or you starve a lot of the oxygen, then you'll reduce the scaling on the blade. So I waited till nighttime. This is not the knife, this is my practice knife. The temperature is just right. You can see it's a nice cherry red. And here's my setup. I have a heat gun, but you could use a blow dryer or a fan or whatever that blows right into there. So here's the idea. It's very hot in there. You just push this into the coals. Make sure you have a long pliers and a nice thick glove because, I mean, this is really hot. And then I turn this on, and this really gets the fire going. And it's just cooking in there. And that's cherry red. It's the exact temperature we need. So now, I'll show you what we have to do inside the kitchen. So I'm inside, I have the oven set on convection because it's the best setting at 400 degrees. And I'm just preheating the blade. This is the tallest container I could find. I'm gonna fill it up and I'm gonna cut the top off. And this is where I'm gonna dunk my blade in to oil quench it. You wanna oil quench it, you don't wanna use water because water creates bubbles on the surface while it's quenching and the bubbles could create minor stress fractures and also cool it unevenly. So you wanna use oil. Don't use motor oil, use cooking oil. I'm using vegetable oil. So just real quick, this is what I did. I cut the top off and you can see it's gonna get dunked right in here and I can move it back and forth. So before I do this, I'm gonna go through the steps. I got my oil right next to the fire. I'm gonna put the chef's knife in there 
when I know the temperature is right, and then I'm going to heat it up. Once I see that it's cherry red, I'm going to keep it like that for about a minute, two minutes. Touch it with a magnet real quick, make sure it's not magnetic. If it's not magnetic, I throw it back in there real quick, heat it back up, and then immediately pull it out and quench it in this oil. And then while you're quenching it in the oil, I'm going to be moving the blade back and forth, not side to side. You want to move it like you're, uh, you're slicing the air, or slicing the oil. And then once it cools down, wipe the blade off with a paper towel or whatever and put it in the oven at 400 degrees for two hours. And that'll give you the right hardness. So we got the fire going, got my good blade here. This isn't the test one anymore. I'm gonna put it right in the inferno. Okay, it's, it's in there. Now we just wait. So I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but that blade is red hot. So we're gonna go take it out. So I'm gonna test it with the magnet right here. I have somebody helping me out just so I could do this all in one shot. Once it checks out with the magnet, I'm going to dunk it right in. The blade is the most important part, so make sure that's submerged and you're moving it around like you're cutting the oil. The handle isn't as important. I did flip it around and dunk it real quick as well. So once this is about 150 degrees, 180 degrees, we'll clean it off with a paper towel and then we'll put it in the oven. So once you could keep it in your hands, it's still pretty hot, like I can't hold it in my hands very long, but once you could hold it just a little bit, put it in the oven at 400, close it up, and we'll wait two hours. So it's two hours later, I have this tray ready, and I'm going to put the knife right on the tray. Just like so, and let this cool to room temperature. Once set room temperature, 400 again for another two hours, and then we are done. So now that the blade is cool to the touch, we're gonna go put it back in the oven for two more hours at 400 degrees, and then the heat treating is complete. Finally all done. Now after four hours of total soak at 400 degrees, we'll let it sit here until it gets to room temperature. Then we can start working on it. Okay, now in the daylight you can see the scaling on this isn't bad since we got the finish nice and smooth and I kept it in an area where there was very little oxygen deep inside the fire. So that's gonna make cleaning this up a lot easier. Now the thing to focus on here is we don't wanna heat this up. We don't wanna sand this so much that it heats up. And we're just going to go through the same sanding steps as before, except it's going to be easier because it's just removing some scale. So we're going to start with 400. Now using 600 grit. I finished off with a wet sand. You can see this came out really nice. Nice and smooth. There's no dimples. I'm gonna go do the other side. You guys don't need to see that. It's the same exact thing. Just sand it up, and then when we're done, we'll start with the handle. Okay, I'm done sanding both sides. I got this all roughed up. Also, I used a little bit of degreaser to clean it off, so if there's any oil on it, it's cleaned off. Now we're gonna be working on getting the handle on the knife, and just for your information, this arrow here is because when I sharpen this, I just need to take off a little bit of material right here. Just a little bit because it's not completely flat. Anyway, with that side note, here's the wood that we're going to be using. This is Brazilian cherry, and this is a hardwood. It has a really nice finish. You want to make sure when you're picking a wood, you pick a wood that is hard, that's durable. This is an exotic wood, but the other thing that you could do, you could find wood that's been hardened. So pretty much they soak any type of wood. You could use a soft wood, you could use a hard wood, any wood, in a resin. The wood that has the epoxy resin built in to make it really hard is called stabilized wood. That's another name for it definitely consider it but I wanted a wood that would have a real wood handle a real wood finish and just it feel good in your hand you know this is gonna be a chef's knife so it is gonna see some water but I've had wood handled knives before and all you have to do is take care of them and now we're gonna drill the holes for this wood and line it up and everything then we'll get some epoxy and epoxy it up and then clamp it in and let it sit so now I'm gonna take my wood and start aligning it to where I want it to be now just use whatever you want to clamp this on 
Good, now that it's clamped in place where you want it, it won't slide around, and we could drill this out. And there's three. So now we're gonna take our wood, flip it upside down, align our holes. You could even use your studs here. Try to get it aligned better. And then take your other piece of wood and line it up exactly where the other one is and clamp it. Now with both sides clamped, we could drill the final holes. Okay, now we have our wood with our holes in it. We'll get our epoxy all set and we'll also get our studs that go in here cut to the right length. We want these to be cut to right about there. I'll mark them with a marker and use the cutoff wheel and uh, we'll get three pins. All three of our knife handle pins are cut to size and now we are ready to bond the two pieces of wood plus this and make a knife handle. Okay, I got my vise and I have plastic wrap around the vise just so that any epoxy that gets on here doesn't get on my vise. I have my workstation set up. Got some tin foil with a little mixer here. Got my epoxy and my hardener right here. And they're equal parts and they're five minutes. So they set in five minutes so you don't have much time to work. I have my pins ready to go. And then I have two pieces of cardboard that are pretty thick to put in the vise so when it gets squished together it doesn't damage the wood here. So it provides some protection. I'm gonna use a scale with some tin foil on it. You don't have to use a scale, you could just do it by eye. But I just like to be very accurate. So it's seven grams of resin. Hit tear. And that's seven grams of hardener. Now mix it together. After it's well mixed, we're gonna take a bunch and get it on our wood. I'm gonna use about half on this side and half on the other side. And anything that you get extra epoxy on, you could clean off with mineral spirits or acetone or nail polish remover, whatever you want. Now I'm gonna get the knife. Gonna put it down on there. Get the pins. Shove the pins through, just like so. And then get the rest right here. Put it on the handle. Good. You can see I put some resin on the wrong side. Make sure you put this on the right side. I just wiped it off, it's not a big deal. Again, I'm gonna be sanding it. You get your hammer and knock these in. Make sure we compress this very tight. Nice and tight, the pins are pushed together. And we'll let it dry for 24 hours and then go from there. Okay, 24 hours later, we can remove the knife from the vise. So you can see it looks good. Now we're just gonna sand it down and finish the knife. So when sanding this wood, you want to make sure you use a mask and goggles because exotic woods could cause a lot of irritation in your lungs. So it's definitely not good to breathe this in. You can see that I am getting into the actual metal of the knife. You don't want to heat that up. So once you get to that, we'll flip it over and get to that on the other side. And then we'll start sanding by hand. After we finish with our flap disc, we're gonna start moving to sandpaper. We're gonna go 100 to 150 to 400 to 600. And what we're gonna do is we want long strips of sandpaper that are relatively narrow. So just get your scissors and cut a long strip. So here's my long strip, it's about a finger wide. And this is the 100 grit. So I have the knife facing downward, so this is how you grab it. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go over and sand it just like that. This will create a rounded edge on both sides.
Okay, once you're satisfied with how this feels, we'll flip it over. Now we'll repeat the same process on this side so we get a nice feel. Once you get the handle the way you want it with that 100 grit, then we'll just start moving up grits. Make sure you get the sides on both sides. Make sure you get all angles so it feels good in your hand. Now we're going to do 150. Once you get that side done, flip it over and do the other side. This is feeling really good right now. I like it a lot. Let's go to 400 grit. Now we're going to move to 600 grit sandpaper and then we're almost done. Okay, we're done with the handle. It looks good, it feels really good. Now we're going to finish up this blade. This little spot right here I want to straighten out a little bit more and then we'll get a nice edge on the blade and then we're done, we'll test it out. So the last step is use this sharpening stone here and I'm going to put a nice edge on this. You could sharpen the blade however you want. Some people might not want to sharpen it this way. If you have a better method then so be it. And as I'm sharpening it I'm going to take off a little bit extra material here just to flatten it out. That is sharp. Woo, that is crazy sharp. Okay, and we are done. So there we go, the knife is done. I have a really ripe tomato. You can see it's really soft. This is like the classic knife test to see the sharpness. And then I mean, look at that. Cut a nice small piece. Got an even thinner piece. This thing is a beast. So there you go, that's how you make a nice chef's knife. This is going to be a Father's Day gift for my dad. Hopefully this video was enjoyable. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. I publish how-to videos weekly and I answer all the questions and comments you guys leave in the comment section below. Also in the description below are going to be the links to my Chris Fix Facebook and Twitter pages. If you use Facebook or Twitter, go check it out.